Hi, welcome back. Today we're going to be working on shoulder opening, strengthening, so mobility and combining that mobility with some strength. Today you'll need to have a few blocks, a couple straps. I have some shoulder stand pads here, so you can use either two of those or you can use a bolster. Have a chair ready and have a green sticky or some sort of sticky mat you can put on top of the chair for a little traction. Okay, let's get started. Before we start our practice, I wanted to let you know about my online programs and workshops. Whether you're new to Iyengar Yoga and want to learn the basics in a systematic way, a seasoned practitioner looking to revisit the essentials, or a yoga teacher seeking inspiration. These programs and workshops are self-paced, allowing you to make consistent progress and revisit specific topics whenever you like. You can find the link in the description below. With that said, let's begin our practice today. So first we'll stand up and we'll just face the wall. So as you get up, take your block away with whatever you were sitting on and you'll step away from the wall and bring your hands to the wall, coming into Ardha Uttanasana. Have your hands wide, press your fingers into the wall, the whole surface of the hand pressing, and then from the wrist, moving back. All right, so really feeling that connection with the wall, extend the arms back, extend the side trunk. So now coming to your feet, spread the feet, spread the toes, lengthen the heels away so there's maximum space underneath the feet. And as you <clears throat> descend the feet, think about a frog. Frog, how they have those little suctions on the back of their feet and their hands gripping, but moving back into the arms and gripping and moving up into the legs. Move the hips away, thighs away, and then, okay. Now coming a little bit further away from the wall, step your feet away. I wanna get a little bit more movement into the upper shoulders, the shoulder girdle, shoulder blades moving down, and bring the chest down toward the floor. So I'm opening through the armpit area, keep the hands pressing into the wall, and I can feel now this upper back area near the shoulder blades, right at the center of the spine and the shoulder blades moving in. Keep the legs moving back, abdomen moving in and up. As you're doing a forward bend, inner thighs rolling back, inner knees from your heels, lift up through the backs of the thighs and just be there with what you can feel. So your rib cage is moving forward slightly. You're getting that opening through the upper back but not going too far forward so that you're overarching right in the center. Let's see if you can create the space right between the shoulder blades and opening the armpit chest more. Keep your hands pressing evenly. And then release. All right, we're gonna use the wall again. This time we'll use a block. So. Hopefully you have a, a block that's not this heavy. Okay, so we're gonna use two blocks. I want this block to go right into that upper back between the shoulder blades or up in that area. So I'm building it up. I have one tall block. It's on its narrow edge. And I have it a little bit away from the wall so I can bring my fingers back there. This one, I'm gonna have on this higher height, this direction. So depending on how, how large or small your frame is, you can have it like this or like this. You can also build up with another block if you need to. So you wanna have this on that middle part of the back. So I'm just gonna take it down to this height. And then coming down, you're going to Bring your fingers around the block. So you wanna have the finger and the wrist, the forearm at the block. You can interlock the fingers if they meet up. Elbows moving down. And then you're going to lift your head up off the floor. So as you press the feet down, press the forearms, the wrist, lift the head, 
and start to walk in. So you walk in until you can feel that block right at that spot and open up through the armpit area by pressing the elbows down and lift the upper arms up toward the armpit. Shoulders lifting up. Stay on the feet, the mounds of the feet. Lift the toes. So you're using the feet to press into the floor to bring your weight forward so you can feel that block. Keep the kneecaps lifted, thighs moving back. And just be aware of your hands on the floor, your wrists, your forearms pressing down and lifting the shoulders, lifting the upper back up. And at the same time, feeling where that block is, moving that part of the back forward. Stay with your breath. Get that extension, that length through the arm. Just make a little space there in that upper arm near the shoulder blade to the elbow. And then come down. Okay, now you're gonna take your blocks away. You're gonna stand up now and you will have your strap. So take your strap, buckle your strap in such a way that can bring this onto your wrists. Okay, so you're going to take your hands behind you, stand up, and be near the wall. Okay, so bring your left foot to the wall. You're going to bring your right foot out in front of you. So stabilize yourself. You can start by turning your feet four and a half, five feet apart, and then turn that heel to the wall. Externally rotate the front leg, heel to the wall and balance through the front foot. From here, both legs are straight and the buttocks is moving forward. So take your strap around your wrists and palms facing one another. And then just lift the arms up. So here, again, you're lifting the armpit chest, which is the front armpit, and the back armpit chest is descending. Tops of the shoulders descending. So stretch your arms back behind you, palms facing one another, and then begin to come forward. Keep your fingers lengthening toward the wall and from the shoulders, move the shoulders back toward the wall. Feel where that block was that we were just using when we were down into that Pinchamaya Rasana action and bring the upper back in. So focusing on that spot, lifting the front armpit chest, lift the arms up. Keeping the hips compact, stay stable on the feet. So notice what you have to do to keep that stabilization. The front of the foot, the back of the foot, inner foot, outer foot, along with the hips. Now, preparing to come up, come back into that awareness of the feet, the legs, the hips, the pelvis lifting, shoulders lifting, head lifting. Okay, turn the feet, and we'll turn to do the other side. So have enough distance so that you can lengthen. If you're too short, if the distance is too short, you won't be able to get that movement forward. So here, I'm externally rotating that front leg. Hip is moving back, this hip is moving forward. And then, again, press the hands into that strap so that resistance will help to create some openness through the chest, shoulder blades wide from the shoulders to the fingertips. And then as you keep extending the arms back, stay aware of the heel at the wall. So press the heel into the wall and keep the legs actively firm, drawing the muscles into the bones as you come forward. Lengthen the lower back forward, lengthen the lower abdominal area forward Stay with your breath. Keep extending the arms, lifting the armpit chest, aware of that spot in the upper back. And then preparing to come up, press into the feet, into the legs, into the hips, into the chest, into the shoulders, and come up. 
Turn your feet, walk your feet in, and just stand back in Tadasana. Keep the strap there. Hands are a little bit behind you. Shoulders are moving down through the fingertips. Keep the outer hips moving in, outer thighs moving in. Feeling the buttocks move forward as you move the thighs back at the same time. And as you do that, feel that length that you can draw from, from the lower pelvis up. So moving the thighs back, buttock forward, lift the chest. Come back to the breath. Okay, now we're gonna go into Virabhadrasana one. So you're gonna keep your strap on and you'll again turn your feet four and a half, five feet apart and then turn your back heel. Your back heel is not turning as much as it did in Parvottanasana, but you want the heel at the wall. If you need more space for balance, bring the other foot a little bit further out so there's more space. You're going to bend the knee here, so you have to be able to have enough distance. So when you bend your knee, if the knee is coming over the toes, you can't move that back foot back, is usually where we adjust from. So start to move the front foot forward, so make a little bit more length through that front foot. And then come back into that back heel, straighten the back leg, extend the arms back behind you, as you bend the front knee. Keep the inner back thigh lifted. Now lift the armpit chest, drop the shoulders, drop the shoulder blades, extend the arms back. Feel that extension right from the tops of the shoulders, broadening through the shoulder blades, or sorry, broadening through the collarbones, lift the front chest. And then finding that spot where the block was, lift up, look up. Keep the back of the head lengthening up, shoulders moving down. Let your hip sink down a little bit more, and then lift the lower abdomen up. Stay with the breath. So you can feel the back ribs moving into the body to get that length through the front body, and that lift through the chest. And then inhale, come up. Turn the feet, walk the feet in, turn to do the other side. So remember we had to widen the feet a little bit more. So do that to begin with, turning the heel, taking the front foot out a little bit further, and then adjust that back foot. You can even bring the back foot, the back heel onto the wall to turn the hip a little bit more. But when you do that, you have to balance even more. So straighten this, straighten this back leg, extend the arms. As you extend the arms, lift the chest. So you're not sinking forward, but you're lifting the chest, extending the arms back to help you maintain that lift through the front body. So sometimes, you might find yourself sinking on that thigh. I want that lower abdominal area to lift up and away. Use the arms extending, pressing into the strap. Lift up, breathe. If you have your heel on the wall, you can feel you have to stabilize a little bit more. Reach the arms back. And then straighten the leg, hands on your hips, turn and walk the feet in. And then stand back in Tadasana, the arms to the side, move your shoulders back, extend through the fingertips. Just come into quietness of Tadasana from the feet, lengthening up, lifting up through the crown of the head. Okay, we're gonna lay down on the floor now, so you can take your strap off. Just put it to the side. All right, now have your blocks. So you're gonna take your blocks. Have one here for your middle back, and then one for your head. 
have this block so that it's extending lengthwise, horizontal. This, was, this is horizontal, this is vertical. Your shoulders are going to go over this block, your head here. You can have the strap as well. All right, so coming down, you're going to lay yourself over that block. So adjust, so move your hips up. Have that block right across the shoulder blades. And then <clears throat> with your knees bent and your feet still on the floor, press with your feet and lift that armpit chest area. Okay, and then take the strap and bring the arms over the head. You can be on your thumbs, fingers lengthening away from you. So here you can feel the back ribs moving in. So whether we're doing back bending or forward bending, we're still wanting to access the back body. Because we're doing all the shoulder opening, we'll do progress into a little bit more back bending action. But even if we we're going to do some forward bending. We still want to access that back body to get that length through the front body before we fold forward. All right, and then stretch your legs out. Be on the heels. Now, let your hips release down. So you're, the top of your buttocks moving down towards your heels, and then your lower back lifting up up towards your middle back and lifting up through the chest. And then remove your strap, take your arms and fold your arms. If you have a little bit of that block there, you move it out a bit, you can rest your arms on that block. So you're opening here in this armpit area. Shoulder blade is directly behind that. You can feel you're on that shoulder blade, which helps because you're on that hard surface of the block, the armpit chest is opening. So even with the arms overhead, you're in Baddha Hastasana. Inner arm is turning, outer arm is rolling, outer shoulder is rolling. So getting that direction of the arms, keep the outer shoulders moving towards one another, and then lengthen. Lengthen from the armpit area up to the elbows. Go back to your lower back, lengthen from the lower back up to the middle back, to the outer arms, outer shoulders, and the elbows. And then extend your arms again. Change the cross on the arms. Press the arms down. And slightly lift the chest away from that block. So where you had that block, close to where you had that block, there was back ribs moving in. and then bend your knees. To come out, I want you to roll onto your side. So I'm gonna roll over carefully. Use your hand. And then I'm gonna take this block away and I'll get a bolster. So using the bolster, I'm gonna take both arms behind, okay? So I'm still gonna be on this flat edge of the block. But this time, I'm going to cross my legs. OK, so coming back into that <clears throat> balanced pelvis, cross the legs. Take the feet, roll the feet under, Sukhasana. Start to lengthen the thighs. And then bring the arms over. Rest the arms on the bolster. And just be there. Allow your, this pelvic area to open, front groin to open. And as you move the thighs down, the knees down, you can feel there's an action in the buttocks. So the buttocks feels, the more you do that, the more you press the knees down, the more you lengthen the legs, the more you can feel the buttocks activating. So from there, lengthen the lower back up, holding onto the arms. Stay with your breath. So not so much using it as a passive pose, but be working in the pose to get that space in the front of the groin and also the space in the arms. You can extend the arms back behind you as well. 
from your waist corners, back waist corners, lengthening up through the fingers. And then release, change. So come up, take your feet, roll the feet under, bring the arms over, change the cross on the arms. So if your feet have gone away from you, see if you can get a little bit tighter in towards you and then press, press the <clears throat> knees down, lengthen the thighs. And then extend the arms. Now for the last 30 seconds, you can take that bolster away and you can bring in the back of your head to the floor, extend your arms, and then lift up, lift the back away from that block. So you can feel that movement in the chest lifting Lower back lengthening, side trunk lengthening, feeling the back body. So the skin moving into the flesh, into the muscle, into the bones. So moving the back body toward the front body. And then release, release the arms out to the side. Bend the knees, feet on the floor. Take your hands behind your head. Lift up and then bring your hands down and roll over and come up. Okay, so now you're going to have two straps and you're going to lie down on your back again. So you'll have a strap around each ankle coming into Chadush Parasana. And I'd like you to have uh, two, two foam mats or have a blanket so that you're building up a little bit like shoulder stand. So I'm taking these two pads here behind me. Just make sure that they're even. And move space, move them down so you have space for your Shoulders here and your head on the floor. Chadush Parasana. Okay, so before I go down, I'm going to hold on to these straps. Chadush Parasana is four points. So the four points you're lifting up from would be the feet and the shoulders. So you want to make sure that your shoulders are grounded. Here we're using some pads so you have a little bit more space for the neck. And you'll get to be able to lift up a little bit more by having that extra height. So press the hands or the, pull the straps with the hands. Make sure the feet are well grounded. And then lift up just a little bit. Roll the shoulders under. So we've been getting that lift to the armpit chest. Lift the front armpit chest. Descend the back armpit chest. Feel the weight of the shoulders on those pads or blankets if you're using blankets. And then move the buttock in, move the tailbone in. Lift the outer hips, lift the outer knees by keeping that weight in the feet. Press down through the feet, lift through the ankles, through the shins, and from the knees, draw back into the hips. Lift the hips up. Press the shoulders, press the arms. You can turn the palms to get more rotation on the arms and lift that front armpit chest. So stay there, stay with your breath. Chadush Parasana. Feel the back ribs moving in while you lift the front chest. From the pubic bone to the navel, move up. So you have an arch here, you're arching, the back body's arching, and you're using the feet and the legs, the arms and the hands 
to help you get that expression. And then come down. Release your straps. Bring your straps to the side. And then roll onto your side. So now we're going to go into Salambhasana. So you use that same strap that you had behind you before. I use this one that you organize for your arms. Oh, I guess I lengthened it. All right, so measure your strap so that it's going to come right on your wrist again. You're going to have that strap behind you so that you can press it into the wrist as you draw the arms back. Okay, so take the strap off. Come down onto the abdomen. And lift each leg. So you want to be right on the front of the thigh and the front of the foot. Toes, ankle, top of the buttocks moving down, buttocks moving toward the floor. You can lift up a little bit, lengthen the front body, and then take your, let's keep our feet hips width ap or slightly apart for this. Press the feet down. And as you press the feet down, lift the kneecaps up. So activate the legs. Activate the backs of the legs as well as the front of the legs. The glutes are moving down. So not clenching the buttocks, but keep the buttocks broad and wide, especially across the lower back. And then stretch your arms back, stretch out through the fingers. So you're elongating the fingers, you're extending the arms, creating lots of length there, and then come up. Press into the feet, lift the front body. So keep the, the weight of the feet moving down, knees lifting, lower back lengthening, curving the upper back. Press into that strap. And then come down. We'll do it twice. So just take a break, take your hands down on the mat, rest your head, reorganize the legs, and then we'll do it one more time. So take the strap back behind you, have the strap on the wrist, extend the fingers. Get that lift to the armpit chest, rotating the arms, rotating the tops of the shoulders and the upper arm. Press strongly into the strap, lift the chest, press into the feet, tailbone straight down, thighs lifting, kneecaps lifting. Breathe. Keep extending through the toes. Hugging the muscles of the legs into the bone, activating the legs, lift, and then release. OK, and come down. Take your strap off. Just go into Adho Mukha Svanasana. Hands at the front of the mat. Walk the legs back. Connect the hands up into the arms, into the shoulders. Keep that connection all the way to the tops of the shoulders, the outer shoulders, through the side trunk. Move the hips back. So you're lengthening from the top of the buttocks. You're pressing the heels down, but at the same time, you're lifting the backs of the thighs up. See if you can Bring your awareness into that area between the shoulder blades. And then release. Coming down. Just sit on your heels. OK, we're going to go into Urdhva Mukha Svanasana. So bring your hands back to the mat again. Extend the legs out. Take your hands a little bit further back. Be on the fronts of the feet, lift each thigh, lift the kneecaps, 
So activate the legs, extend through the toes, top of the buttock moving down, lower back lifting, press the hands down, elbows moving back, chest lifting, and then come up, straighten the arms. Because we started with the feet back, so you can bring the knees onto the floor and then walk your feet forward a bit, move your chest forward, Press into the toes, lift the hips, and then come onto the front of the foot. Press the foot down, lengthen the lower back, lift the chest, keep the thighs lifting. And then come onto the knees, and come back, sit back on the heels. Okay. I faced myself toward the wall, so you can do the same, so you can have your toes close to the wall if the toes don't go onto the floor. I've had an ankle injury, and so years ago I get tightness there. So I just use the wall to help me to get that extension. Take your hands back. So you're sitting like you would be sitting in Dandasana, so that's how we start. Front armpit chest lifting, back armpit chest descending. And then you're going to come up, press your hands down, straighten the arms, lift the hips up, press the toes into the wall, and use that to help lift up through the armpit chest. Lift the buttocks up, keep the legs active, and then come down. You can come a little bit further away from the wall, see if you can bring the toes down further, or the toes all the way onto the floor. So here, we're getting the movement from the back body to the front body, and we're lengthening the front body. Calves lifting, knees lifting, outer hips lifting. Back body moving up, straighten the arms, and then come down. And take your blocks to the side. And you'll come up and get a chair. Okay. So you're going to use the chair at the wall. You come down onto the knees. Stay a little bit away from that chair, depending on your arms. I'm going to bring the arms back. So I don't have my hips all the way to the chair, but I have the hips slightly away so I can extend the arms back. The hips are over the knees, so just adjust yourself. Fronts of the ankles are on the floor. Front of the foot on the floor. Stretch the toes back. You can start with your Hands on your hips, bring the tailbone in, lift the chest, and then again, bring that memory of the less pose, Purvottanasana, lifting the armpit chest with the thumbs at the tailbone, move the tailbone forward, lengthening the fronts of the thighs, and then take your arms back behind you, holding the chair, roll your shoulders back, You can also have your hands on the chair seat. Lift the back of the head up. Descend the shoulders so that you make space in the neck. And then move the buttocks forward. Lower back lifting. Chest lifting. Pressing the shin bone down. Pressing the ankle. And then release. Just be in standing on your knees. Take a break. We'll just do it a couple times. So be there. And then take your hands back. Lift the armpit chest. Move the hips forward. Lengthen the lower back up. Middle back, bringing those ribs in. Lifting the front chest. Front growing opening, 
lengthening through the whole th length of the front of the thigh. Feel that contraction of the hamstring from the back of the knee to the sitting bone. So those muscles are working together. One is lengthening, one's contracting. And release. Okay, you're gonna come up now and you'll turn your chair to face forward. Bring your feet in. So we'll just do a gentle twist. Bring your arms onto the chair. One arm behind, one arm in front. Keep the knees and the feet together. Inhale, lift. Exhale, turn. So let's concentrate more on opening the, the back body, opening through the front chest. Stay with your breath. Lift the lower abdomen up, navel moving in and up, lower back lifting, bringing the breath into the chest, exhale, turn. And release. And then coming to the other side. So this back arm, this inner arm rotates out, shoulder moving out. You can take your hand back, you can even take your hand on the chair rail now You've done a lot of shoulder opening now. So you should be able to grab that. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, turn. Have your hands on the chair in such a way that you can use the arms without lifting the shoulders. So keep the shoulders moving down. And as you turn, turning from the back waist corner up, revolving, turning action like you're wringing a rag so that center of the body is getting that benefit of that tightness, turning and twisting, and then lift your opposite chest. And exhale, release. Okay, we're gonna walk out of the chair now. So to come out gracefully, you can just bring the chair forward and step out one at a time. So always, taking some care on how you go into the pose, being in the pose, and coming out of the pose. Okay, now we're gonna take the chair and have it face toward the wall. You can have a mat. If you have an extra mat or a blanket, I like to use the mat because it helps to get the length through the lower back. So we've established a lot of length through the lower back upper back moving away, so we're going to use the mat. Coming into Viparita Dandasana, you're stepping into the chair, move your hips in, and I'm not going to take blocks this time, so if you do need blocks, then you should get your blocks or have the feet at the wall. So start by getting that band, sacral band across the hips and the top of the buttocks moving down. Press the arms with the hands, lift that armpit chest, still opening through the armpit, let the shoulders roll down. If you haven't come far enough out of the chair, then come down a little bit further, but make sure that your hips are still, um, <clears throat> your lower back is lengthening. So everyone has got different lengths of the body, so you have to find the place that is going to be the best for you, but you wanna have the whole back supported on the chair. Now I'm stretching my legs out, heels are on the floor, extending, pressing the toes into the wall. And with that, I'm moving the, the tops of the thighs down. So there's a the firmness here at the front thigh, moving down as I extend front, opening through the groin, press the heels into the wall, Extending the calves to press the heels. And if you don't feel quite right, you need to get a little bit more openness through the chest. You can always come up and adjust. So the way you would adjust, just adjust quickly. 
So I'm coming a little closer to the wall. I'm bringing my shoulder blades just a little bit further off, pressing the feet into the wall, straightening the legs. And now I'm going to bring my arms over. Palms facing one another. So when I do this, I've got to maintain the length through the legs. So the lower back is lengthening, thighs are moving down. And if you're ready for this, to bring your arms over, you can bring your arms over. If you did it and didn't feel comfortable, you can also just bring your arms into Baddha Hastasana, holding the elbows. Let the weight of the arms move down toward the floor with the back of the head release. Neck long, keeping the chest lifted. Extend the arms out. Stretch the fingers, keeping the arms and the legs active. Feeling that length coming through the abdominal wall. Stay with your breath. If it gets uncomfortable in your back at any point, you're in the chair in a way that's not good, then just bend your knees, bring your feet onto the floor. From your top of the buttocks, through the legs, extend the heels. From the toes, draw back, lift the knees, move the thighs down. All right, we're preparing to come up. So you take your hands back to the chair rail, bend the knees, come out of the chair just a little bit long, further, let your head release, neck release. So as you come out further, you're moving your hips more into the center of the chair. And then when you're ready to come up, move one back foot slightly back, one foot forward, Holding onto the chair, lift yourself up and sit in the chair. Just let the head, back of the head, back of the shoulders, back of the hips, release. And then coming out of the chair. Take the chair now and turn the chair. We can keep the chair this direction, actually. So you want to be about one arm's length away. So your feet will be on the front of the chair. You can sit on the chair. Bring your toes onto the floor, bring your heels onto the chair rail, and then hold the chair rail. As you lift up, put your back on that chair. So you wanna keep the weight moving this way. You don't wanna have the weight moving back. So feel the back on the chair. And with that, press into the toes, lift the buttocks, lift the hips up, press the heels, and then you can take your hands back on the wall. So from here, you can see how much you're going to be able to straighten the arms. So as you press, press the hands, keep the elbows in line with one another. If that's too uncomfortable, then you can take your hands wider, lifting the hips. You can also start to walk your hands down a bit. Straighten the arms. So here, the backrest is helping you to get that lift. Keep the neck lengthening, back of the head moving away, thighs parallel to one another. And coming down, take the back of the head, support the head as you come up. Okay, we'll do that twice. 
So just sit for a moment, preparing to come back to a quiet breath. So if you were too close to the wall and you want to bring your arms a little further down, but you were too close, then bring your chair a little bit away. Okay, so now holding the chair again, we're going to lift up and lean into the chair, feeling that's right around the bra strap. So everyone knows where the bra strap is. So press into the toes, press the heel, lift the thighs. Legs are parallel to one another. Let the head release down. Take the hands back. Elbows moving towards one another. Lower back lengthening. Walking your hands down as you can. Press the hands. Lift the chest, lengthen the legs. And then coming down, support the head, come up. All right, so now I'm just going to turn my chair to face you. Come into your chair. Bring your feet underneath your knees, stabilize through the hips, bring one arm over, and then take the other hand back. So you're lengthening, turning. So keep the head in line, and as you turn, walk the hand back, roll that shoulder back, walk the hand down further. Just watch your knees, one knee tends to go back, so this, this knee, this thigh, in the direction you're turning, that needs to be lengthened a little bit more, and then lift the opposite side and turn. And now turn without disturbing that and look over your top shoulder, your front shoulder. Stay with the breath. Release. We'll go to the other side. Making sure your feet have stayed placed right in the center, balanced. And then take your arm on that chair. Bring your arm back. First, just hold the back of the chair. And then start to walk the hand back. See if you can catch that back chair rail. Walk the other arm down. Lengthen this leg. As you turn, Turn from the back waist corner, lift up through the top chest. Navel moving in and lifting up. So the abdominal area, the lower abdominal is lifting, side trunk is lifting. And as you rotate and turn, turning with your exhalation, looking over your back shoulder, maintaining that. Broadness through the chest. Look over your front shoulder. Keep the neck long, the head lifted up. Stay with your breath. And then release. Okay, we're going to come out of the chair. And prepare yourself for Shavasana. You can take your bolster and bring the back of the knees on the bolster. So sitting down, adjust your hips. So you have two options here. You can either let the knees rest or come into Shavasana, feet together and uh, just allow a little bit more weight on the thighs. All right, I can take some blocks and build those blocks up on top of the bolster. Just making sure that you lengthen the lower back or the buttocks and the lower back is moving away from that so that when you're there, 
you have space in the back body, space in the front body, and then here you're still getting that rotation of the arm, rotation of the shoulder. Press your arms down, lift up slightly, move your shoulders down, shoulder blades down, and then just relax the arms, relax the hands, and then let the legs naturally roll from the inner leg to the outer leg. So feel that you're right on the back of the head. If you need to adjust the head, take the hands right at the bones of the back of the head, lengthening the neck. So you bring a little bit of softness to the throat. You know, we're speaking a lot in our daily lives. Whether you're speaking out loud or you're, or you're thinking, your voice is, your voice box is still activated. So there's always a little bit of tension there. You just allow your Shavasana now to take away any tension there, tension in your face, across the forehead, all the skin around the eyes, the temples, as you release the jaw, feeling that softness through the inner mouth. And then just be with your breath. Let your exhalation become a little bit longer. Letting go with each exhalation. I'm gonna set a timer for you so you'll know when. Approximately five minutes is over. So just be willing to be there and stay.
Namaste.